I love plants and I especially love garden. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you a story about a badger. The story is called Badger's Perfect Garden. In this story, you're going to see a badger trying to plant the perfect garden until everything goes wrong or so he thinks. So I hope you're going to enjoy this story that is written by Marsha Diane Arnold and illustrated by Ramona Kalitsky. So I will see you at the end of the video. Enjoy the reading. Badger's Perfect Garden. One spring morning, Red Squirrel found Badger surrounded by dozens of jars. The jars were filled with seeds. The seeds looked hopeful, just like Badger. What are you doing with all those seeds, Badger? Uh, getting ready to plant. I gathered them late last summer and kept them in jars all through the winter and fall. Now I'm going to plant a perfect garden. Red Squirrel looked closer. They're all different. Yes, all kinds. Green and brown, flat and round, bumpy and smooth, whirly, curly and straight as my whiskers. Where did you find them? Some from uh, Weasel's garden. Some from the wildflowers near Dormouse's home. Some stuck themselves to my fur. And some floated in on the wind. You have so many, said Red Squirrel. You'll need help planting. Weasel brought his favorite rake. Red Squirrel helped Dormouse gather string. Badger studied his garden plan. We have to make sure the ground is perfectly smooth, said Badger. Everyone weeded and raked. When the earth was as smooth as the forest pond in winter, Badger pushed big sticks into the dirt. Red Squirrel and Dormouse stretched strings between the sticks to mark rows. Be sure the rows are perfectly straight, said Badger. Weasel found a twig to make holes for the seeds. Bumpy seeds in this row, round ones here. Keep the whirlies together, Badger directed. When the seeds were planted, Badger invited his friend to a celebration. Everyone enjoyed muffins and mulberry juice. Badger imagined the plants that would grow in perfect rows in his perfect garden. The next day, the sky sent showers. Badger smiled. The day after that, it sent heavy rain. Hmm. Badger worried. The day after the day after, it sent a downpour. <gasps> Badger grabbed his umbrella and rushed outside. He ran up and down the rows, trying to cover his seeds. The rain kept pouring. Badger flung himself across the rows, doing his best to hold the earth together. Sticks and strings collapsed. The ground began to slide. Ah! Red Squirrel, Dormouse, and Weasel came running. My beautiful seeds have washed away, Badger sniffed. Seeds will float on the wind again when the sunniest day come, comforted Red Squirrel. After the wildflowers bloom, there'll be seeds to collect, said Dormouse. We can gather seeds when my vegetable ripen, says Weasel. Collecting seeds is hard work, and besides... I'll have no perfect garden this summer, said Badger. Badger could not be consoled. He stayed in his house, busying himself with this and that. One summer day, in the middle of his afternoon nap, Badger heard a clamoring at his door. 
Badger, come on, come look, come look! Cried Red Squirrel, Dormouse, and Weasel. Your seeds found another place to grow. Those can't be my seeds," said Badger, rubbing his eyes. "They're all mixed up. They just rearranged themselves," said Red Squirrel. "If you hadn't planted them over there, there wouldn't be over here." Badger stared at the hodgepodge of colors, the jumble tumble of shapes and sizes. They made him feel jumbly and tumbly too. It looks like a celebration. It's the most perfect garden of all. And because the friends loved celebrations, they ran into the garden for a hodgepodge of garden games, jumbly tumbly dancing, and muffins, and mulberry juice. In the end, Badger got his perfect garden after all. It wasn't what he was planning at first, but in the end, it was beautiful, and he got to play in it with his friends. So now it's going to be up to you to think of your perfect garden. Hmm, what would you have in your perfect garden? Would you plant trees, flowers, fruits, vegetables? Really think of what makes you happy. Hmm, if it was up to me. I would put sunflowers in my perfect garden because they're my favorite flowers. They're very tall, kind of like me, and they're always turning towards the sun, which is very positive and happy. So it makes me happy. So just think of that when you're designing your perfect garden. You can use the document that I've put next to this video, or you could just simply use a piece of paper at home to do your drawing and writing. So have fun designing your perfect garden and get planting.